Ken what's Rock. going on, everybody? Welcome to a special live episode of Martial Arts Radio. This is our 20th installment wow. of the question and answer format. Joined as often by Andrew Adams. How are you, Andrew? That's I'm you. great. I'm great. I'm glad to hear it. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host for the show, founder of Whistlekick, where everything we do is to support traditional martial arts and artists. Our mission statement is to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world. And that's why we do a variety of things. Go to whistlekick.com to find all of those things that we do, whether that's podcast stuff or product stuff or event stuff. There's a ton. How do I know how much stuff there is? Because I am a very tired person. <laughs> that is one way. It is. Okay, and we do this, and we do this, and we do this. The other way I know is that uh, if people ask me all the things that we do, I, I always forget some of them. It's because we do so much. We do a ton. And it's far more than me or just us. There is a broad group of people dedicated to this mission. But on today's Q&A, you have a variety of questions that people wrote in or, list, or listened in. No, they wrote in, they emailed in, messaged in to you. And if they want to get a hold of you for the 21st Q&A, how would they submit a question? So they can always shoot me an email, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Uh, you know, I, we often make a joke that we're not really good at naming things, you know, like yeah. free training day. It's a, it's a, an, it's a full day of training. And the costs- only thing we named creatively was the company. Whistle kick is a cool name. Everything else we do is like the vanilla ice cream of names, but you know what you get. It's there. It's good stuff. It, it doesn't have to be named creatively. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. You can also find me on Facebook. I'm not that hard to find if you're really looking for me. Uh, And shoot me a message and you can get your question asked uh, during one of these live episodes. Uh, We also have uh, Mark Warner in the chat here saying good morning. Good morning, Mark. I intentionally have the chat closed in case the question comes in now that you choose to ask. I, I closed it up on my end. Nice. So if you guys, you can ask questions in the chat and I can add them and we can ask here. Um, do you want to get going? You want to, you know, just banter a little bit more? while we? Um, I just want to remind people if they want to support us in what we're doing, uh, the three big things that we ask people to do, we have the code podcast one five to buy anything. Uh, I've got four boxes sparring gear going out today. Like I woke up to two orders overnight. Like our sparring gear is, is Top notch, and people are figuring that out. So that's cool. We have apparel and a bunch of other cool stuff at whistlekick.com. We've got a Patreon that starts at $2 a month. I uploaded a brand new episode, exclusive audio episode yesterday to the Patreon. And if you want the whole list, because sharing episodes and reviews, there's a ton of stuff. We give you instructions on that whistlekick.com slash family. And there's also bonus content there. We I try to make it valuable to people if you're willing to participate. Awesome. So uh, before I ask the first, the, uh, our first question, we do yeah. have Stacy in the chat. And she says, Hi, Good Stacey. Uh, Dennis is running to his next meeting. He just wanted to pop in and send some love to his Whistlekick family. That's nice to hear. Hey, Dennis. Uh, and so that is awesome. And then uh, Carl is here in the chat. Hey, Carl. From New Jersey. That's great. Looking forward yeah. to seeing uh, all of them. Uh, we'll see all of them very soon at Free Training Day Northeast. That's right. So the first question is actually from Stacy. So it's great that she is here in the chat right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll put the question up on the screen and I'll, I'll add, I'll add something. Uh, you know, oh, wait, I, wait. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted. Uh, we won't, but I, and it would be far more fun if I could see her face when I say this. Um, but maybe, maybe we should make Stacy ask the question live on the air. Except, except I messed up. I switched questions. Uh, it point hurt. stands. She, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. She would not. She would not like that. No, she would. But I, I lied, and I'm sorry, Stacy. It's not from you. This one's actually from Jenny Mather. Uh, I had so many come in. I was looking at the wrong one. But oh, I'm, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you remember when we started this, and it was like pulling teeth to get questions. Believe me, it's still pulling teeth to get questions. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. No, really. Well, maybe you all can help Andrew out and, you know, just sit down and come up with a bunch of questions that he can bank 
Yeah. Eventually, was- this is it, it won't be. You know, someday, maybe when we hit episode 50 of the Q&As. Maybe. maybe. All right. So here's the question okay. uh, from Jenny. What's the best slash most beneficial requirement you have heard of as a part of the testing requirement doesn't have to be just for black belt. And she also added some examples that she's seen, which, you know what, I'm not going to read. I'll wait and read that after. Yeah. Sure. Um, I think the best requirements are those that permit individualization. Um, for example, I have seen tests that require someone to develop a thing. There, I, I, I trained at a Kempo school where, you know, quite often Kempo uses the term technique to describe a sequence, whereas a lot of other martial arts, you know, a punch is a technique, whereas in a lot of Kempo schools, a technique might be six movements in in a group, right? What a lot of other schools might call a combination. That school, in order to even test for black belt, you had to develop your own technique or what I would call combination and be able to explain it and break it apart and really like know it. I thought that was really cool because it, it allowed people to pull from the different things that they, they love. Um, I've seen other schools that require make your own form. I've seen other schools that require competitive achievement or um, teaching classes, right? This idea that because martial arts is so many different things and because most of us really resonate with a few pieces, we might accept all of them and see value in all of them. But most of us find, you know, I prefer this and this over this and this. And so the ability to be able to discover your own relationship with those things, I think is really nice. Uh, And that could include... I've seen writing projects, you know, write an essay, write a, write a thing, right, on what is important to you or, or something, whatever the topic might be. But I've also seen that that can be broader. You could write or make a video. I, I don't know about you, Andrew, but in, in high school, I had some teachers who were pretty cool. They're, you know, I want you to do this uh, fine, this art sort of subjective thing. Like it could be a paper, it could be a video, you know, in this modern era, it could, you know, code a video game, whatever it is, right? Like, and so I think that there are a lot of things that I find to be really great. And it is the thing, anything where people get to showcase the specific elements of martial arts they are passionate about. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. And she gave some examples. Um, complete a log of random acts of kindness signed by a parent, guardian, or teacher. Um, I, I love that. That's pretty great. Um, must submit a thousand plus word essay on something pertaining to your martial arts journey, mm-hmm. which causes a little bit of reflection, which is a good mm-hmm. thing. Um, you know, I have, I'm, I'm a fan, like you said, of the really indiv- indiv- individualization tough word um <laughs> in doing your your art whatever that art is exactly and, and you know, i think I, it becomes I, and I you agree, right? it becomes more impart, important the further you progress correct absolutely the you know design your own kata is great or, or form or whatever um or come up with your own bunkai for a particular form you like you know schools not all schools some of them have specific things that they break down their forms to mean but they could mean something else and so right. i, I I definitely uh, enjoy that. Um, and it helps to progress their ability to grow, which is pretty awesome. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, kind of going off a little different direction here, one of the things that helps us grow uh, as a company is uh, supporting our Patreon. Mm. The, the Patreon is something that I really enjoy about what we do because it is, I, I've, I've, use the word value on this show so many times. Everything we do is rooted in value. And Patreon for me is a very clear way to figure out what creates value for people, right? It, it's a microcosm. It is the people the that are most passionate about Whistlekick and the mission and, and primarily the podcast. But there are people who have come in that you know know very little about the podcast, but like the brand. And when I put things out, sometimes I can put things out that I might not put out across the whole podcast feed or something because I know the audience. I know very specifically, these are people who think very highly of us. 
so I don't have to worry that it's going to be taken the wrong way. Yeah, I I would say it it becomes it can become it is not always this case, but it it can become a little more intimate. Yes. You know, you know the audience that you're talking to, and so those members in the Patreon they kind of do become part of the family and um you know you can get a little more vulnerable with them in a way that you can't with with the 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 global audience for sure and that's why we're starting to do monthly live hangouts on zoom and you know we're doing all sorts of stuff with that patreon and you know we just had he's gonna hear this and and he's gonna feel bad and i don't want him to feel bad but we had the first person in months many months changed their pledge mm-hmm. they didn't stop they just they had to pull it back because of some financial goals of theirs totally understand i sure he felt worse about it than i did <laughs> right uh and when i look at a, a statistic like that the idea that people don't quit patreon they don't stop in fact far more often we see pledges go up it's value we are giving yep. the absolute best we can to these folks. So um, I mentioned earlier that I made the mistake that I, I confused Stacy with Jenny. It was more like the questions on the sheet were really close, yeah. but, uh, but, but uh, Stacy does say, Jenny, me, I can easily see how you could confuse us twinning. They have uh, very similar spirits. I was going to say their personalities are pretty, pretty similar. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Um, All right. Are you ready for the next question? I sure am. Okay. This next question comes from Chris Rickard. I did not mess this one up. This one is definitely from Chris. I know who Chris is. Yeah. And Chris, his question is, how do you tell if a technique just needs more practice or if it isn't a good match for you? Oh. Five minutes. Go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, that's a great question, Chris. It really is. Um, a technique that is not a good match will be one that you find little opportunity to use. A technique that needs more practice is one that you see the opportunity to use, but it fails. If my, let's say I'm a, a passionate competitor, you know, in striking arts. And my school's curriculum has a handful of throwing techniques, you know, hip toss or something like that. It's not that it's bad for me to know that technique. It is not that it is bad for me to understand and practice that technique. But if we consider our why, which is incredibly important, my why in that case might be striking competition, you know, point sparring sort of thing. That's not going to be a good match. It's not going to work well. Now, there are even striking rule sets that permit a little bit of that, but you're not going to use it very often. A technique that needs more practice. Oh, yeah, I, I... I should absolutely be doing a sidekick in this circumstance. And the person is is able to close the distance before I can get the kick up or something. Maybe that means there's an opportunity to practice more and make that technique better and thus more usable. Done. Okay. Yeah. I, I like, and like when I hear this type of a question, I often think of, because it's for me, it's the one that jumps to my mind most quickly is um, we have a, a, a young woman in our class that we, we both know Abby. Mm-hmm. Um, Abby is uh, vertically challenged. She's not right. a tall person. Um, and our instructor has no problem in the vertical department. He's six foot four. He is a much taller person. Um, And so, you know, we will often do a technique in class uh, and it doesn't work for Abby. Her size does not allow her to do it on every student. Now, sometimes she'll work with a student that it will work on. And so, you know, even if a, I would say, even if a technique isn't a good match for you. So using Abby as an example and, Abby is an incredibly close friend of mine. I don't mind mm-hmm. 
uh, thrown, I don't want to say throwing her under the bus, but I don't mind using her as an example. Um, she still works at those techniques, even though it's not a good match against me because of my height, but she still practices them because she wants to understand the principle because she might be working with someone who is. Exactly. I, I think when we talk about this, I think it's actually easier to see the difference in a grappling -y sort of self-defense area. There are times when being, you know, let's, let's say the same height has a little bit of a, of a window, you know, a couple inches either side. Certain techniques work really well. Certain throws or self-defense maneuvers work well when the person is roughly your height. Mm -hmm. Others work much better when you are taller. But let's face it, that's not a common self-defense scenario. Most of the time, you're going to be attacked by somebody taller than you. There are some techniques that actually do work better when you are shorter. Now, it can there can be a, a point of diminishing return there where, you know, if they're 16 inches taller, maybe it's not going to work. But if they're six inches taller, it works better than if they're the same height as you. I, there yep. are some of those. They're not common, but they do exist. And so if we talk about those subjects and you are someone who trains in a school where they say, okay, we're going to show you all these self-defense techniques, these this jujitsu, this grappling, et cetera, and pick a few that you're going to you know, really feel comfortable with, if you're a shorter person, a dramatically shorter person, you might pick the ones that are best against a much taller person versus if you're 5'11", you pick the ones that are best against someone who is roughly your height. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm guessing that's where Chris was going with it, knowing him. Yeah, I, I, the very well could be the case. We'll, we'll see him next month. We can ask him. We will. <laughs> Um, we here with okay came out with uh, a, some new products recently. Mm -hmm. I saw on the website. Um, is, is I can't tell is that sweatshirt one of them? No, the sweatshirt is not the t shirt I'm wearing. Oh, okay. I'm gonna half strip the t shirt. Is oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. This is the, this is the script. I, I like this, I like this font. It's fun, you know, it's not at all our logo, but it's fun, yeah. And you know, uh, everybody likes wearing different clothes. Yep. And what I like, what I like yeah. about that particular shirt is um, it, for those that haven't noticed that Whistlekick does not put their name on a lot of things. Look at the hat you're wearing. Yep. Look at the sweatshirt you're wearing. It's got the logo. It does oh, say Whistlekick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I like that it says Whistlekick. That's, that's cool. Some of the things that we we have do not say whistle kick. Most of them do not say martial arts. Yeah. Once in a while, we put martial arts on something because some people want to tell the world that they train. Not everyone does. Yeah. So like yep. this hat, that T-shirt. Uh, I think the back of this here. Does the back of the hoodie say never settle? Yep. Yep, it does. Yeah. So in play, you know, we, we use our slogan quite a bit. And if you don't get the newsletter, you probably didn't know that we dropped a fall collection. I'm working on the winter collection right now, which will be smaller. But um, yeah, check out whistlekick.com. Use that code podcast15 and grab yourself a tee or a hoodie or a hat or a denim jacket. Flip flops. A lightweight sweatshirt. Slides. We do have the flip flops up there, but the fall collection had slides that are really kind of fun i had to mess with the logo a little bit so it would it would right. fit and i loved how it came out awesome all right you ready for the next question always ready for the next question okay next question is sent in by uh Ooh. before yeah. you do that we should do a question a thon maybe that's 800 that's a great idea okay okay i'm writing that down uh okay next question sent in by uh oh uh andrew adams Sent this question in. I don't know this guy. He's a nice guy. Is he? Is yeah. he? I, I heard. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of like a gentle insult that wouldn't re involve swearing. I got nothing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you heard he pours too much milk in the cereal? I heard he pours the milk first. That's weird. <laughs> Isn't it? I don't do that. It, okay. Unrelated to martial arts at all. 
the idea of pouring the milk in the bowl first, which there are people who do this, and I suspect they come from homes where they use much less expensive cereal and the milk was considered more valuable, Could and be. they would pour the milk first. That is such an odd thing that it is almost an insult. I bet you pour your cereal milk first. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so my question was, uh, you recently returned from Free Training Day South. I did. And this is our first uh, podcast where we have the opportunity to talk about it. And so my question is, what was the most unexpected thing from Free Training Day South? Could be good, could be bad, could be neither. But what was the, the thing that you didn't expect to happen at Free Training Day South that did? Uh, so while I'm thinking, I'll, I'll clue people in in case they're really not familiar with what we're doing with free training days. Uh, we are about to have our sixth ever free training day Northeast, but this year we are holding one and we held one in Atlanta over the weekend. I'm flying out to Portland, Oregon this coming weekend for our sixth. That will be our seventh. This year will be our, in the Northeast, it'll be free training day eight. We're going to have to start numbering them because I expect locations will increase over time. The very first free training day Northeast was very similar to free training day South. And I think for me, that was the unex une the thing that was unexpected, but it should not have been, right? Um, one of the things I've found is that while we have a very loyal following that truly is global, I mean, it's American centric, but it is global. We have you know, when, when I check the numbers, and you, I, I talk about this for podcast purposes. We, we have downloads in literally every country. I've seen that. It's super cool. But the South doesn't know us that well. Much of what we have going on in the Northeast comes because I had prior relationships with people. We've built a lot of things and had a lot of reach. And I grew up in New England. You grew up in New England, right? So free training in the Northeast, it's like all these connections of all these people and years to shepherd it forward. And free training day South was very similar to the first year of free training day period. We didn't call it Northeast back then. It was just free training day. A very comparatively small group of people who were incredibly passionate about training, some of whom knew each other, most of whom knew Justin, who put on the event, some of whom knew me and came from other states. We had four different states represented, whereas uh, the first free training day here in the Northeast, I think we had one, two, I think we also had four states represented and a bunch of people stuck around the whole day. Most of them stuck around the whole day and didn't want to leave. And then we all went to dinner and they didn't want to leave. And then we stood in the parking lot for 45 minutes talking because people didn't want to leave mm. because they found people who were like-minded. And so I hadn't thought about that. So it wasn't that it was strange or un, you know, I could have anticipated it, but I didn't. Mm, it makes sense, but that was what was unexpected. And it was really nice to kind of, I guess the best word I can use is bask in that energy of people who are finding that this group, this tribe, this family of martial artists really is something, I don't want to say different because that suggests that it doesn't exist without us. And that is not the case, but that we are exactly what we say we are. We are passionate about training. We support people training and teaching and doing their own thing in their own way. And, you know, I met some great people and look forward to hopefully training with them again. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. You know, this, this episode obviously is going out live right now. Uh, people can theoretically watch it two or three days from now, but it's going to, it is going to get released in the podcast form just before our Northeast event. Uh, and so the Northeast, the Northeast event is the weekend of November 11th to the 13th. Um, it's the first time we're doing an actual weekend. The yeah. free training day is still Saturday. Training is free. Free um, training day is part of, you know what? This is kind of fun. This is the, I'm genuinely f figuring this out live with you. Yeah. The original version of free training day was called martial arts weekend. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is the first time 
free training day is part of martial arts weekend. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. The uh, Friday night, we're having a meet and greet in town, which is happening in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, if you're listening and we're not planning on coming, you know, we hope you consider doing so. Yeah. Uh, the meet and greet is free. Um, all of the info will be on the Facebook page, uh, Free Training Day Northeast. Look for it on Facebook. Yeah. And then the Free Training Day is Saturday. We're having dinner at a re local restaurant in town. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. The stuff. Never Settle Awards are getting doled out that evening yep. at dinner. Yep. We've the got uh, Matic Level 1 teacher training the next day. Mm -hmm. Right? Like all these pieces. like It's on. all coming together. Oh, cool. That's so fun. All right. Are you ready for your fourth and final question? I'm sad, but yes. Okay. So uh, I know that you, I, yeah. um, here's an aside. Do you watch Kung Fu Panda? I've seen, I believe I've seen them all. They okay. blur together. So hopefully you're not yeah. going to get specific. Okay. Yes. Uh, I and, have seen and, I, and I know the best that thing Jack Black's ever done. Yeah. And, and I know you've seen the Ninja Turtles. Like a million times. It's an understatement. This question was actually sent to me from my friend Braden Fisher, who's not a martial artist at all, but he wants to know your thoughts on who would win in a fight, Master Splinter or Master Ugwe? Who was Ugwe again? He not was Panda. He was the turtle. Okay. The the teacher turtle. <sighs> it's interesting too. Master Splinter taught Ninja Turtles, and he would be fighting Master Ugwe, who was a turtle. I think I'd have to give it to Master Splinter. And I think that is one of the very reasons, right? It's a small reason, but if you've spent a bunch of time teaching turtles, you know how turtles move. Mm -hmm. They will have physical uh, advantages and disadvantages. Um, it also depends, and I don't remember the movies well enough, I don't remember what kind of turtle Master Ugwe is. Is he one that can just pull into a shell? Completely and hide. I don't remember. You know, because that that creates a pretty awesome defensive strategy. Um, to me, Master Splinter is is, you know, it's like Bruce Lee, right? Like I just can't imagine him not winning in any given moment. I can't imagine anyone being better than him. He was, you know, he he was my Bruce Lee growing up. Yeah. You know, just like very wise and, and um, very powerful lessons hidden in cartoons. So, yeah. And it's interesting that they both, they both use a bow. They both fight with a staff. Or maybe not fight, but Master Uguay has a staff. And Splinter mm -hmm. often carried around a staff. So, yep. Not so, to be confused uh, with a bow. What, you, like a cane. On. Like a cane sort of a... Sh cl closer to a shillelagh, really. Yeah, yeah, kind you know, of that, that some some uh, like an iron one cade or something. Yeah, I'm I'm going splinter. All right. I wonder if anybody disagrees. Do you disagree? Uh no, I think you're right. I think uh, I think Master Splinter would win as well. Um Mark Warner, uh Mark Warner thinks uh Ugwe goes metaphysical though. See, this is where my knowledge of those movies really is not sufficient. So maybe I'm gonna have to. You know what? Maybe that. Maybe we do a, a how to fight. How to fight Master Uguay? Yeah, we haven't done one of those in a while. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So there you go. There's those were great uh, questions. They were all over the board. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. So there's our our final question uh, yeah. for, for wow. our, our live Q and A number twenty. I hope people who are watching or listening now or later will all bombard you with questions. Please do. Please do. Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Please hit him up with some questions for the next time that we do this. I think that would be great. Um, the questions that come in, they're always great questions. But it would just be nice, you know, because you do so much for the show and, and these episodes. You know, I, I don't do anything on this episode. I show up. I intentionally, I'm looking, there are a bunch of comments. I don't know what any of them are. I'm assuming you've, you know, you've put some of them on, but a lot of them are, you know, they're just over there. I'm, I'm you're doing the whole thing. I'm just yeah, yeah. There, I'm like, Meh. 
I'm a I'm a willing participant in a little more. So people out there willing to help you would be would be kind of cool. Absolutely. I'd love it. If people want to help us sharing episodes, uh, suggesting guests, there's a form at whistlekickmarshmarsradio.com, or you can email that to you as well. Uh, making a purchase using the code podcast15, the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And of course, we've got the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. If you find yourself, you know, checking out the things that we do and really feeling like you are heard, seen, understood with the philosophy that Whistlekick has of being style agnostic and simply passionate about training and supporting the training of other martial artists, you probably are family. And thus, you would probably find value with the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. You got to type it in. We did that intentionally. We continue to do that intentionally. If you're not willing to take eight seconds to type it in, you, I'm, I'm sorry, you don't deserve the benefits that are on that page. And you only have to do it once because then it's just saved in your browser history. <laughs> and I even put a date and time at the top to show you when it was last updated. So you don't have to scan the page to find the update only to not find an update. Awesome. So there we go. All right, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Andrew, thank you for this and for you. Uh, I, I'll, I'll hit the end broadcast here. I'll do something on this show. <laughs> and until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile. smile have a great day. Okay. <laughs>